Welcome to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel. Now, today we are going to be looking at uh, linearization of functions. Now, this applies to uh, paper 3 and paper 5 in the 9702 physics syllabus. Now, in paper 3, remember you'll be asked to draw a graph. So, plotting a graph, they would want you to identify the gradient like you equate the gradient to one of the constants and equate also the y-intercept to one of the constants so you should be able to know how to do this right and now in paper five what you need to do is uh, to uh, be able to identify the gradient and the y-intercept the difference between paper five and paper three is that in paper five they tend to linearize uh, logarithmic functions as well as um, other functions that are not covered in the paper 3 syllabus. For example, e to the power x, ln x, and so forth and so on. Uh, logarithms to base 10 and 10 to the power of something. So you should be able to linearize such functions. Now the process of logar uh, uh, the linearization is uh, converting these uh, uh, these functions into uh, into linear functions that can be easily uh, uh, worked with, that is to come up with uh, uh, your graph. Now linearization, in linearization you, are, you, you want to change that to be in the form of uh, y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, y is equal to mx plus c, right. Okay, so this is the variable that you're going to be uh, plotting on the y-axis, which tends to be your dependent variable. Okay. And then this is the variable that you plot on the x-axis, which is your independent variable. Now you find that the dependent variable is obtained from independent variables by altering them okay now this is going to be your gradient okay and then this is going to be your y intercept just call it y int okay so that's how you are going to be dealing with these uh, functions now i'm so yeah you're you are stating them in that format that is in the form of y is equal to mx plus c now let's look at the first uh, first expression that you need to change. Now this is from the June 2020 paper 3. That should be paper 3 2. Okay. If you check that practical, there is this function here. 1 over t squared is equal to a d squared plus b. Now, you want to plot 1 over t squared versus a d squared. Okay. 1 over t squared versus d squared. Now, in the form y is equal to mx plus c, so this is going to be your y, and then this is going to be on your x-axis. So, that's going to be your x. Now, what is going to be your y in your, your, in your gradient and your y-intercept? So, in the form y is equal to m x plus c so that's how you do it and your gradient is corresponding to a and your y intercept is corresponding to b okay so the value that you're going to calculate after you do this practical is your gradient that is going to be the constant a and the value that you're going to calculate or that you're going to determine from the graph is your y intercept depending on when you whether your graph is passing through x is equal to zero when you read that value when x is equal to zero that's your y-intercept so that would be the value of b now if you do not read that value you need to calculate it using the same uh, equation y is equal to mx plus c i hope that makes sense now moving on to the second expression uh, this is from uh, june 2020 paper 33 now from paper 33 uh, the expression is y is equal to 
AM plus B. So similarly, uh, this is your dependent variable. This is your X. That is your independent variable. And this is these are the two constants, A and B. So you're plotting Y versus A. Uh, so Y versus M. Okay. So putting it in the form Y is equal to MX plus C, you'd get the constants a and b day so a will be your gradient and uh, b will be your y-intercept so when you're doing these graphs or when you're plotting these graphs please make sure that you do that you just put the analogy there of y is equal to mx plus c on top of uh, that value and then you quickly get your y-intercept and your uh, gradient okay so this is for the as okay those that do AS. Now, looking at the ones that are going to be doing A2, right? So, when you're doing A2, you find that uh, you have a situation you're given. So, in this case, the student is investigating uh, the discharge of a capacitor through a resistor using the circuit shown in figure 2.1. So, there is your capacitor, it's always connected in parallel to the resistor. And then you've got the voltage. Now the student initially closes the switch and charges the capacitor. The switch is then opened and a stopwatch is started. The capacitor discharges through a resistor. At time t, the potential of difference V across the capacitor is measured. It is suggested that V and T are related by the equation V is equal to Q0 over C e to the power of minus T over RC. So this is e to the power of minus T over RC. Where Q0 is the charge of the fully charged capacitor c is the capacitance of the capacitor r is the resistance of the resistor a graph is then plotted of ln v on the y-axis against x on the x-axis ln v against t sorry ln v against t on the x-axis so determine the expressions for the gradient and the y-intercept now in this case what you need to do you're going to take since this is raised to the power of e you are going to take logarithms uh, to base E, which is ln. So you're going to take ln. So starting off with that, you say ln V. Let me write it down. Let me ink it and see. Right. Start inking. Right. So let me scroll down. Yes, yeah, so the expression is given there. So it's going to be ln v, right, is equal to, then you take the logarithms again on this side, which is going to be ln of q0 over c, this whole part, right, and then plus ln of the whole thing, e to the power of minus t over rc. Okay, so that's how you do it. So on the on this side here you've got ln v is equal to ln q naught over c plus now if you take the logarithm of uh, to base e of e to the power of something it becomes that value so it becomes uh, minus t over rc so that's how you're going to get it right and then from there you can rearrange the uh, the, the expression so it's going to be ln v is equal to minus t over rc plus ln of q naught over c okay so that's how it's going to be now if you express it in the form uh, y is equal to ln uh, m mx plus c that is the linear function y is equal to mx plus c this is mx plus c you find that we already have the expression for the y-intercept so the y-intercept is going to come up as ln q naught over c then since you are plotting against t from this uh, question you are told that you are plotting against t so that's ln v versus t so which means 
uh, minus 1 over RC becomes your, your gradient. Okay. Because this is just the same as, uh, so minus T over RC is just the same as saying uh, minus, or just say T times minus 1 over RC. It's just the same as that. So it means your X is going to be T and then your gradient is going to be minus 1 over RC. So this is the gradient, which you then write on this space here. And then this is the y-intercept, which you then write on this space over here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If you do have questions, please let me know in the comment section, and uh, I'll be happy to, to help. Now, looking at the second question, which is the final question, uh, the student... So a student investigates how the viscous force on a liquid varies with temperature. The student releases a ball from the surface of the liquid in a container. The ball falls as shown in figure 2.1. So that's the diagram of the ball falling. And then the student determines the speed of the ball between P and Q, uh, measures the thermodynamic temperature T of the liquid. Viscosity is a term used to describe the viscous forces acting in a liquid. Visco uh, viscosity has the unit of pascals per second, or pascal second rather. The viscosity uh, eta of the liquid is calculated from the speed of the ball. The experiment is repeated for the same liquid. And then we have this expression. Eta is equal to h e to the power of e over kt. Okay. h e to the power of e over kt. So this is taken from the May, June 2020, paper 5.2. We check that question paper. Where E and H are constants and K is the Boltzmann constant. A graph of ln eta on the y-axis against 1 over t on the x-axis is plotted. Determine the expressions for the gradient and y-intercept. So again, like we did in the first one, we have our that viscosity is equal to H E to the power of uh, E over K T. Okay, that's it. So you take, since it's being raised to E to the power of something, you need to take natural logarithms, that's ln. If it's raised to the power of 10, then you need to take logarithm to base 10. So ln, the viscosity, is equal to ln H plus um, uh, ln, e to the power of e over kt okay so like i said if you are raising ln it becomes that value that you're seeing there okay so it's going to be ln viscosity is equal to ln h plus e over kt again since we are plotting against uh, one over t on the x-axis there which means that one over t is going to be our x in that analogy, y is equal to mx plus c. So he rearranged this to be ln viscosity is equal to e over k times 1 over t is the same as that. Okay, plus ln h. So this becomes your gradient x and then this becomes your y-intercept. Okay. So you, you write this on the gradient, which will be E over K. And then you write this one on the y-intercept, which is ln H. Right, so I think uh, these are the examples. Uh, please let me know again in the comments whether you understood this. If not, uh, please put the comments and I'll be happy to help you in, in any way I can. Please uh, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, push the notification bell so that you get notified of any new videos that I post. And don't forget to like and share on this post. Signing out.